Here's where it gets a little dicey on hair. Hair's really boring, first of all, it, to talk about. It's a boring subject to talk about. And it's also like um, not a big deal, so we think. What I'm going to tell you, friends, respectfully, and this is just personal opinion. I'm trying to do a good job letting you know what's, what is founded in literature and research and what is me just telling you. If it's something that I'm telling you, just take it or leave it. Use it however you want to. My personal opinion is hair is a necessary, we'll call it evil, it's not evil, but it is necessary. It's not going to be a huge moneymaker, and there may be some of you in here that will absolutely refute that, and you're doing great with hair. If that's you, I applaud you. I think that's amazing. In my experience, I haven't found it to be a huge moneymaker because there's so many people doing it. It's kind of working its way down competitively. Everyone's just cutthroating each other. But it is necessary. It's 100% vital to have in your practice, and here's why. For retention. Write that down. Hair is vital for retention because everybody's doing it. So even if it's not a huge moneymaker, you have to have it because everyone else has it. And your patients who are doing the money-making stuff will go somewhere that has hair to get their hair done, and then they'll get gobbled up. And then they'll go doing their Botox over there and their fillers over there and all their other stuff over there. So hair is necessary for retention. Does that make sense? So this is why I love the opportunity to have hair on my Optimus. Because in my world, where before I had a busy hair practice, to me it didn't make as much sense to spend money on a show pony, a trick pony that only does one trick for a low yield trick. Does that make sense? So I didn't want to spend money for a device that only does one thing. And it's hard for me to make money on that one thing. I love spending it on a device that does seven things. And just as an added bonus, we've got hair on here. That's a great first purchase if you want to delve into hair. Start here. Because you've got your Morpheus, you've got your skin, uh, your IPL, skin tightening, your vascular, and you have hair. So now I've got a device that does a bunch of other revenue streams, and I can still retain my patients because I do have a device that has hair. This is where I started. So this is how we started hair, <clears throat> and it's with the dialase. So it's a dialase laser, a diode laser on your Optimus as an option. This market is huge. We all know that everyone is spending a lot of money to be hairless. Men is the most rapid growing portion of this segment. No longer is that hairy chest a cool thing, which is good because I don't have any hair on my chest. So if I was back in the Tom Selleck days, I would not be, I would not be desirable because just no hair. Was that 80s when that was really cool to have a big, bushy, hairy chest? Yeah, so we're not there anymore, but maybe the pendulum will swing back. Um, so this has the gold standard wavelength of 810 nanometers with the gold standard fluence. Again, blah, 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 laser light physiology. What this is telling us is efficiency. So our target is the gold standard, very precise, and the um, ability to lay down this tissue or this energy over a unit time is the gold standard. Now, listen up, because I've lost almost all of you. It's almost lunch. We're talking about laser hair, which is the most boring thing in the world. So, so it's very vital that I wake you up again, OK? So we're going to do that by talking about cooling. It's important to have a chilled tip, not unique to InMode. A lot of people have chilled tips. What is unique to InMode is the fact that we have 3P cooling. What does that mean, doctor? Let me explain to you. If you are moving this down screen, we are pre-cooling. We are parallel cooling and post-cooling. So this chilled tip is not just the part that delivers the laser energy. It is the outside as well, so pre, parallel, post. And the reason why this is important is it improves patient tolerance. If you need an illustration of why this is so important, please watch this video. I started getting laser hair removal, um, essentially all over my entire body. Okay, and so when they do your front downstairs, they're going to do your back downstairs. Okay, and when they do your back downstairs, they make you spread them. I don't like do like I don't like doing that. Like essentially, like I've been there at this point probably like twelve or thirteen times. That means twelve to thirteen more women have seen my butthole than than men have. It's just if I just throw it out on the table for you. So because I don't like Truth. to spread them, I will just let the <laughs> lady kind of just like go in there blind. And uh, so this, this one of these last times, she went in there blind, didn't know where she was shooting, shot it right into my butthole. Right into my butthole. When I tell you the scream in which I scrimped, 
The scream in which I screamed, I have never screamed before. I swear to God, the laser shot right out of my mouth. <laughs> shot right out of my mouth. Started lasering things down. There was, there was, I was going, ah! I was lasering all over the place. The glasses were breaking. Light bulbs were shattering. <clears throat> I looked like a fucking, like a lighthouse. Like William Defoe. So, if you go get your butthole lasered, make sure that you, um, that you spread them. They don't care. So, there you have it. We're learning so many things this weekend, right? Make sure you spread them. Don't go in blind. If you have a chilled tip, it makes all of this way better, way, way better. We don't want any lasers coming out of anybody's mouth. So, um, that's the importance of 3P cooling. So, we've got high fluence, large spot, uh, spot size, and the best wavelength. So, what that means is efficiency. Here's some data for you. In three treatments, you know, what do we always tell everyone? Six, eight, however many. In three treatments, we had a 72% reduction at three months. That's significant after three. And, of course, we're going to want near as 100 as possible. I don't know if you could ever obtain 100, but we want as close as we can get. And so, um, at six months, or sorry, at one year, that retained at a 70% reduction after just three. At a year later. That's significant, friends. So think if they go ahead and do maintenance at that point, just maybe one a year or every time that one, that flyaway happens, you know, that one you can't see that's around the corner and then you look down and it's like this long. You're like, oh my gosh, because <laughs> your laser hairs work so good except for that one hair that's now like 12 inches long. Um, so here's some results. Like I said, super exciting stuff before and afters of laser hair. Don't get too excited. We have a hairy arm. We have a bald arm. Okay, next, next. You guys get the point. Um, we, this is how we did the surface area data on the percent reduction um, in our clinical study. 